Hi, my name is Gopal Nambiar and today I'll be presenting my work to enhance the usability and accessibility within the Apache Resilient DB ecosystem. Over the past year, I've focused on developing tools that make it easier for students and developers to work with this blockchain technology, both in research and in teaching. So Apache Resident DB, which is now under the Apache incubation umbrella, is a decentralized secure database designed for transparent and tamper-proof record keeping. It's a high-performance blockchain database that supports fault-tolerant operations, which makes it ideal for distributed systems research. Being in the Apache incubation also means Resident DB has the backing of the Apache community, which brings additional resources and credibility to the project. My goal has been to uh, make Apache Resident DB more accessible enabling students and developers to use blockchain technology effectively. My primary focus has been to improve usability, scalability, and development efficiency within the Apache Resident DB ecosystem. I've, I've developed Docker images that over 250 students have used to simplify their setup. I've also built CLI tools and APIs that make it easier to interact with blockchain. Finally, I implemented CI CD pipelines to automate testing and deployment, significantly reducing the manual work. Collectively, these efforts have streamlined research and teaching, allowing users to spend less time setting up and more time on experimentation. Um, so setting up the Apache Resident DB was initially challenging um, for students, often requiring complex configurations. And to address this, I developed Docker images that automate and simplify deployment across various platforms, including macOS and Linux. Um, these images have been downloaded and used by around 300 students, with numbers still increasing. The solution has helped students and researchers access Resident DB faster, improving the overall user experience. Here's a screenshot from Docker Hub showing uh, two of our images. Uh, these are the two flavors that are currently available, which is uh, Resident DB ARM64 and Resident DB uh, AMD64. Uh, you can also see the download count as of today, which is uh, 300, uh, but this is uh, still increasing uh, on a daily basis. And this reflects the significant adoption that these images have seen. So REST contract, uh, what is REST contract? REST contract is a command line interface that I developed to handle smart contracts. So originally interacting with smart contracts on Apache Resident DB was difficult without a dedicated tool. And REST contract um, aims to solve that um, issue. Uh, and what it basically does is allows users to utilize the feature of smart contracts on Apache Resident DB while hiding the complex um, underlyings of it from them. Uh, Risk contract solves this by providing a simple CLI that can compile, deploy, and manage smart contracts. Some core features include uh, the, uh, the ability to convert Solidity files into deployable code, deploy contracts and manage them easily. And this tool has helped increase productivity and made it easier for developers to experiment with contracts. <clears throat> Here's a screenshot showing that uh, the usage page for a Risk contract. You can see commands for creating, compiling, deploying, executing smart contracts, and it, this makes it intuitive and user-friendly as well. Uh, the next um, project that I took up, which was shortly after the REST contract, which, would, which made sense for us, was the smart contracts GraphQL API. And this smart contracts GraphQL API provides a flexible and accessible way to query and manage these smart contracts that we previously, previously spoke about. And the previous query methods for Apache Resident DB were limited. So this API allowed the developers to interact with the contract seamlessly and making it easier to integrate it within their projects and uh, any front-end applications that they would come up with at the end of the course. Uh, it makes data access easier and opens up opportunities for broader application integration. This screenshot shows uh, the create account mutation in the API playground uh, with the output displaying the address of the created account. It also demonstrates how um, intuitive the API is for the developers. Next, we talk about ResDB ORM. So ResDB ORM is an ORM library that I developed to simplify the interactions with the Apache Resident DB's key value store. Um, so previously, when you work with the key value store, it was time consuming and error prone. Uh, and ResDB ORM basically allows you, for, um, allows you to uh, perform basic CRUD operations, which supports both versioned and non-versioned interactions. And this library has streamlined the development and made data management with Resident DB easier enabling faster prototyping and make, uh, makes more efficient workflows. Here's an example of what it can basically do. Um, starting from a basic installation where it's available on uh, PyPy. So all you need to do to install ResDB ORM is a simple pip install ResDB ORM. Um, and this is a test file that we have on, on the repository as of today. 
uh, what it does is it uh, creates a sample data uh, and also the key value store can uh, process any form of JSON data, uh, no matter how big it is. So we have in this instance, a, a simple name and age field within the data parameter, and we're gonna perform the basic CRUD operation. So we have a create operation that we uh, invoke using the db.create uh, command. And then we have a db.read, similarly a db.update and a db.delete. Um, in the third screenshot, what you can see is um, the working and the successful working of all um, the commands that we just spoke of. Uh, CICD or continuous integration and continuous deployment automates testing and deployment, which helps improve code quality and operational efficiency. Without it, manual deployment was slow and prone to error. And by implementing CICD pipelines for the entire resilient ecosystem using GitHub Actions, I've enabled faster, more reliable deployments and more consistent testing as well. This has fostered a productive deployment cycle with quicker interactions. Um, some of the examples of these CICD pipelines that uh, I have implemented are, um, for example, build and test. So this would uh, just ensure that the latest pushes uh, were not faulty and it would pick up any error prone pushes to the repository. And since all of these, um, all of these pipelines are triggered as soon as a push is made to the repository, we're sure that it won't be of any um, problems in the future since we're um, finding out the errors before they're introduced into the code base. So build and test was one of those. Um, one of, uh, for, the, for the REST contract or the smart contract CLI, we had a publish NPM GitHub workflow, which would um, basically push the CLI tool onto NPM for easier access for the developers and the students. And this would happen on successful testing. So once the testing goes through and it works well, it's automatically pushed onto NPM. Um, similarly, we have another build workflow. Um, and for the ResDB ORM, we have a test publish workflow, which tests and make sure the latest code changes have no effects on the existing functionality. And once those tests have passed, we publish them onto the PyPy so uh, people can still access the latest code uh, using pip install. Uh, also for our uh, quick start, repository, we have a pages build deployment. So since it's a website, which I will be talking about, um, we build and report the build status. And once the build is successful, only then will it be deployed using GitHub uh, pages and GitHub actions. So the quick start website uh, that I just spoke of is, is designed to help new users to get started with Apache Resident DB um, and its tools as well. Uh, before setting up Resident DB, required a lot of technical knowledge, but what we aim to do with the Quick Start website is to have like a one-stop shop uh, solution for all uh, new users and developers. And now this Quick Start website provides a guided experience, including installation instructions, code samples, and integration guides as well. It even includes a link to the blog post that we write as um, developers at Apache Resident DB and an interactive installation script download as well, which um, allows the user to pick and choose which applications in the ecosystem they would like to use, and it dynamically provides them with an installation script which they can just run on their Linux machines. Um, this is a, a screenshot of the landing page of the Quick Start website, and you can see it's uh, the clean layout and um, the different tabs that they can explore, including the blog, the installation pages, usage for uh, the different um, applications in the ecosystem, an API reference, including examples, um, uh, more information about the contributors and also an about us page, uh, which would give us more information about um, Expo Lab and Resident DB as well. Okay, so um, with Docker images, CLI tools, APIs, the ORM library, and CI CD support, I've made Apache Resident DB much more accessible and usable for students and developers. Today, over 300 students are using the Docker images alone, and feedback from the academic community has been overwhelmingly positive. Look, uh, looking ahead, I plan to expand CLI capabilities, enhance API features, and continue building CI CD pipelines for greater scalability. Uh, I'd now like to demonstrate some of these tools that I've mentioned above in action. So the first demo I'll be walking you through is for the Docker images as part of Apache Resilient DB. Uh, here I have a terminal that's running in an Ubuntu environment. Uh, so what we're gonna do first is we're going to pull the AMD 64 version of the Resident DB uh, Docker image. So this may take a while, so I, I might uh, fast forward it once it's done. 
Okay, so now that it successfully pulled the image, uh, we can see the images uh, has been pulled. Okay, now the next thing we want to do is to run the container. So this would start the resident DB container and name it my server. Now, just to see that um, users can utilize the resident DB functions, we are going to um, exec into the container and run a few test commands to see that it's working as expected. So for that, we would run the exec command and we want to enter it with the bash. So now that we're inside, we can see that we have all the dependencies required to run our resident DB. Now, so for our test purposes, I'm going to be running the key value store. And what I just uh, pasted is uh, the start KV service command, which will uh, bring up the, uh, the KV store or the key value store. Now, just to test to see whether we can set and get um, values onto the database, we're going to run the following command. So what it basically does is we're invoking the KV service tools and we are passing in the config file, which is uh, just a basic file containing um, the location of the running server. We have the command, which is set with version. Uh, and set with version uh, allows us uh, for different versioning for the same command, which is set. Um, we're going to set a key, which is key one, and we're going to be setting the value as v1. Um, as of now, we're using the version zero, but um, with uh, newer versions and older versions are supported using the set with version command. Now, again, the key one and v1 are simple strings, but also we can also be uh, committing more complex data. So I'm just going to run this command. And as we can see, um, the set function did work as expected. So now our database has a committed key, which is key one and a value, which is P one. Now, just to check whether we can get um, the same uh, information that we just set, we can also run the get with version command. And what it requires is that you pass it the key that you're looking for, uh, for which it will return the value as V one. So this is a, the simple demonstration of how um, students, users and developers can utilize the Docker images to run resident DB. So next we're going to look at res contract or smart contract CLI. Um, so what are smart contracts? Smart contracts are digital contracts stored on a blockchain that are automatically executed when predetermined terms and conditions are met. So this is one of the features of Apache resident DB. And um, I'm going to show you what res contract or smart contract CLI is and how it helps users utilize this feature of Apache resident DB with ease. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm also running this res contract within the same container that we just saw earlier. Um, so I'll begin by creating a new account. Um, and this is done using the res contract create command. And this is what it looks like. Um, and this command generates an account within the resident DB environment and returns the address associated with it. Uh, the, the C flag points to our configuration file, which includes all necessary network and connection details. And by running this command, we get an account address that we can use as the owner or sender in subsequent transactions. This step is essential because every interaction with a smart contract requires a valid account. Um, and this is how we generate it. So this is the address that we see for the newly, uh, newly created account. And I'm just going to store it because we're going to need it again. Um, I'm going to run the command again since we need a second account for today's demo. Okay. So the next step uh, is the compilation command. Uh, what this uh, does is basically take a .sol file, which is of the solidity type uh, file extension, and convert it into a JSON file, which is something that we can use and what Apache Resident DB um, uh, expects as part of the smart contract process. So we have a file uh, here called token.sol, and this is what it looks like. And it's a basic file as it uh, sends X amount of value of tokens to another address from one address to another address. So since this is in a .sol format, we, um, as part of rest contract, what we can do is just run the, the compile command. And as you can see, it's compiled successfully to output.json, which is the second parameter that I provided. Um, as the file uh, that we want to store the output in. If you look at it, this is what the file looks like. This is understandable by Apache Resident DB, and uh, it has some metadata within it with uh, some functions that's like balance off and transfer, as well as the token name, which is token.sol token. And we will be seeing this uh, as we go ahead. Now, the, the next step is to um, deploy this very smart contract on the Resident DB network. And we do this using this uh, res contract deploy command. So the deploy command looks like this. And uh, I'll just go over the parameters. So we have the config file as usual from before. Uh, we have the contract that we just compiled, which is output.json. We have the name associated with the file, which we saw within the file contents as well. 
And here we have something called arguments, which means in our case, the argument is 100. That means the, the amount of tokens to transfer in this case will be 100. And we also need to set the owner address. And in our case, we're going to give the first address that we generated, and this will be the owner of this particular smart contract. So once we run this, we see a bunch of different details, but what's most important to us are the last three, which is the owner address, the contract address, and the contract name. Uh, when we run the next command, we will understand why these are really important. So now that we have deployed the smart contract, um, how it works uh, in um, a blockchain network or a blockchain environment is that when certain terms and conditions are met, these smart contracts are executed. But since today we're going to do a demo of the execution taking place, we're going to run the execute command, which is another command that's provided by this contract. And this is what it looks like. So we have some arguments that we've seen before, like config. Um, in our case, we also have a sender. So in um, we're going to use the sender that uh, as we're going to use the sender that we created as part of the first uh, create command. So we're going to provide the config file as uh, we saw before. This points to the config file. We also have a sender. Uh, in our case, the sender would be the, the first account that we generated. Uh, we then need the contract address. The contract address is one of the outputs we received from the deploy command. We then need the function name. And since we're trying to um, execute a transfer of tokens from one account to the other, we're going to use the transfer function that we had uh, seen earlier in our uh, JSON file. And finally, we have the arguments. And in our case, we'll have two arguments. The first argument is going to be the address of the account we want to send the tokens to, which would be this. And the second argument would be the denomination or the amount of tokens we want to transfer. And in our case, we're going to keep that as 100. So once we run that, uh, we see this particular hash. And um, this indicates that the contract was successfully executed. We also get some other metadata about the caller address, the contact address, the function that was executed, and some of the parameters as well. For this part of the demo, we're going to go over Smart Contracts GraphQL API. Um, and we just saw some of the functionality of our, our smart contract CLI or the REST contract. Uh, the smart contracts GraphQL API um, can achieve anything that the smart contracts CLI performs, uh, but it's exposed as an API, which allows the users and developers to in, uh, interact with the smart contracts feature of Resilient DB uh, through um, their choice of application and um, can, also, you can also integrate it into uh, front-end applications. So what I've done here is just uh, cloned this repository from GitHub. And I've just run an NPM install, which installs all the packages required for it. And all we need to do is uh, run an NPM start, which will then tell us that the server is running on port 8400. And we, let's check out what this um, exposes for us. When we log on to the port 8400 that we saw, we are presented with the GraphQL playground where we can execute mutations and see a um, sample of the outputs that you would receive once you have integrated this API into your application. So. Since majority of the features provided by Smart Contracts GraphQL API is uh, similar to REST contract, I'm just going to show you um, one small example of how we can run this. So here I have a mutation called create account. Um, I have uh, mutations for all the various uh, functionalities that REST contract provides. So you can expect a deploy contract, um, execute contract, and compile um, the contract as well. All of that can be achieved using uh, the GraphQL API. But for simplicity today, I'm going to be just showing you how we can create an account using the uh, create account mutation. So um, as, as for the create account, the only parameter it requires is the config file. And I have, um, I have given the path to the config file. And all I'm going to do is run this. And once we run this, on the right-hand side, we see uh, what is returned by the API. And what's really important to us is this last hash here, which gives us the address of the newly, account, newly created account. So this can, again, then be used to compile deploy and execute the contract as we saw earlier. We'll now take a look at the Resident DB Quick Start Guide. So this is the website that we made um, to help new users understand everything about Resident DB um, in a one-stop shop type solution. So uh, here we have the website. We have um, tabs such as blog, installation, usage, API references, contributors, and about us. Um, here we've listed some of the important repositories, some of them that are part of the ecosystem some of the apps that have been created by students and developers, and some other features of Resident DB. We also have a quick switch to light mode. Um, the blog shows us uh, the various blog posts that were made by um, uh, the students working at Expo Lab. 
And this also, we've also automated um, the blog content here so that every time a blog is posted um, on our blog.resilientdb.com, um, it gets updated over here with an, a, a new blog post. Um, installation, so the installation guide uh, is another one of um, the features that we added to the quick start guide. So one of the, one of the features we have here is a custom installation script generator, which allows users to pick and choose which one of the applications that they want to have running and then generate an install.sh file, which has um, a list of all the dependencies that would be required. And once they do take this install.sh file to their computers, they can just run it and have it up and ready without any issues. So once I click and uh, download your custom install sh file, we can open it up and we see that we have all the dependencies and all the different applications that the user chooses that will be installed and run. So the, for the next part of the demo, I'm gonna show you uh, some of the CI CD we have in place for some of our applications in the resident ecosystem. For this specific uh, demo, I have chosen ResDB ORM and I'm gonna show you a little bit about how this works and um, we're gonna start with a simple change to the setup file. So all I'm gonna change is the version number. Uh, I'm gonna make this 1.1.5. And as we can see that there have been changes made to this file. Um, I'm then just gonna go uh, and add it. We're gonna say um, my update version. And then we're gonna push this. So um, we're gonna go over to the GitHub repository now. We um, go on to the GitHub repository. We see that there's a workflow that has started um, as soon as the push went through. And what this exactly does is it goes over um, the changes that we made. It runs the installation script that we have within the repository. And what the installation script does is download and install all the dependencies needed. Um, it activates the virtual environment, installs the package, and finally runs the tests, which are some basic tests which ensure that the functionality, the bare minimum functionality of the ResDB ORM uh, is still intact and has no errors. And as long as the tests pass, we will see that the next step of the workflow, which is the publish step, will go through. And this only goes through once the test comes out, comes out as a successful run. Uh, this may take a while, so I am going to fast forward this until um, the point where we're done with the tests. So as we can see here, the test went through successfully. And since it did, uh, the publish workflow has begun to, ins um, to install the dependencies, build the package, and finally uh, publish the package to PyPy. And once it's done, we also get a link to just show you some of the tests that were um, run as part of the testing. It, it's the same test.py file that we have in um, the repository is run. And so as long as the tests go through well, uh, the, the package is published to PyPy.